What's going on guys, I'm Anthony Maze, here with my review on the latest Pokemon Sun and Moon anime episode. Episode 87, Alola's Crisis, the darkness that devours radiance. With that title now said though, get relaxed everybody, as I will now jump right into this episode review. So the episode begins off with... Action right away! I did not expect that when I clicked the play button for this episode. But I'm glad, as it got me very hyped for this episode. As you can see, the newly revealed Pokemon for this anime, Necrozma, breaks free from some kind of crystal prison in another world and notices Sigalio and Lunana flying in the distance, which he then launches off this prison to attack them. Meanwhile in Alola, Ash wakes up and is shocked to see Professor Kukui wearing his lab coat buttoned up, along with wearing a t-shirt. And I don't blame him, as it's very weird to see Kukui fully dressed. <laughs> but the reason why Kukui is fully dressed up is because he is feeling down, kinda sick. Once Ash arrives at the Pokemon school, he then learns that everybody else's parents are feeling the exact same way and couldn't even tend to their jobs or provide for their kid. Which by provide for their kid, I mean Sophocles' breakfast at lunch, which he even stated, quote, My life is over, end quote, simply because he doesn't have food. <laughs> uh, that was brilliant. Oh, also, we got a confirmation that Lana's dad lives with Lana, but we don't get to see him fully in the flashback. Eventually though, Kukui arrives at the Pokemon school to give a lesson on an eclipse that's about to happen in Alola, hence the dark weather. However, he's feeling too down to give a full lesson that he just leaves it to the classmates to find out for themselves, while him and Samson go go to sleep in the teacher's office. Ah, that's amusing. So up comes Kiyori who teaches everybody about the eclipse and even his festival that it has. Hashtag Kiyori best teacher. Comment that down below. The festival though, is basically an event where the four Anna Kahunas go to their ruins and pray to the legendary Pokemon that formed Alola, which Lily then pitches in to tell the story of how Alola got formed, which is basically that Ultra Crossman made Alola with its light. However, after using up all of its energy, it becomes its normal form. So, Sigalio and Lunana appear before Necrozma and lend it their light, which Necrozma then returns to its true form. Hashtag Lily best storyteller, hashtag Lily best narrator, hashtag Lily best pokegirl, hashtag Lily is cute. Comment that down below if you want as well. <laughs> Lily knew this story though, due to losing me telling her and her brother about the story before going to bed on multiple occasions when they were even younger. After school ends though, Ash and Kiori practice using their Z-moves in a battle, but they don't come out, which they believe is to do with the weather, while Poipo also draws from Necrozma's symbol to Ash and Kiori, suggesting it's Necrozma's doing, with the two not knowing what this symbol means though. Meanwhile, we've then seen Necrozma chasing the legendaries in an ultra wormhole, battling them, which was very short, but sweet as hell to witness. Necrozma damaging Sigalia, which I believe is Nebby, due to the next episode having Nebby, and then it chases after the remaining Lunana, wanting to get its body. A special team rocket unit then arrives in Alola, who learned about an ultra wormhole that's about to appear, and knew that Necrozma was going to come out of it, wanting to capture Necrozma for themselves. Gladion with his Silvali in some area, then fear that an ultra beast will appear in Alola, which he then decides to join the ultra guardians later on. Moving on, at Aether Paradise, the Aether Foundation who are also feeling down, this meaning every adult in Alola is the same, find out that the Ultra Aura is getting sucked into a very tiny Ultra Wormhole at the Ultra of Sun, which is why the sea moves don't work due to needing that energy, and the reason why the adults feel down. Basically, I guess this aura is a special can of air. Before we move on to... My god, Wick needs to chill. That was hilarious. <laughs> this lack of aura also making people feel the opposite to how they usually do, as you can see from these screenshots. Anyway, because the Aether Foundation learned about this Ultra Wormhole, they sent the Ultra Guardians on their fifth mission, which is to meet them at the Ultra of Sun, along with Gladion returning, whose entrance was epic and amusing, due to not like it that Ash has another Ultra Beast friend. And the Ultra Guardian's mission is to use their four Z moves on a machine that Faber made to remove the cloudy weather so they can open the Ultra Wormhole, which was hidden behind the clouds. Which the Z move scene we then got to see was epic. Like, oh my god. I fanboyed over seeing these four Z move users coming together so much as it was that cool. Cannot wait for the day when Lily pitches in too. 
Of course, after this, the clouds went disappear, and this me decides to show everybody ruins that were recently discovered, which is some kind of prophecy relating to the story Lily told earlier on. However, the time looking at this wall gets cut short, but we'll come back to it later for a theory, and Brunette screams for the gang to come back to her as the Ultra Wormhole fully opens up, and out comes Lunana, getting chased by Necrozma, which was epic as hell, especially because of the music. This shot too, my god, it was stunning. And with that story now said, let's now move on to my overall thoughts we got in this episode. Firstly for the story, it was definitely slow paced for the majority of the episode, which couldn't help me but feel kinda dull at times. Apart from that one little scene we got in between for school stuff, which was Necrozma chasing Zagalio and Lunana, as it had tension and hype built around it. However, apart from that, the story then picked up drastically towards the end of the episode, especially the final scene we get to see, which as you guys saw, I fanboyed over that like crazy. But, putting that aside for now, everything was just starting to intrigue me once we reached this fast paced storytelling. So, I would only really say that I only really enjoyed half of this episode. However, this slow storytelling at the beginning of the episode was to be expected, and it's completely understandable, as the anime did kinda need a build up episode to explain why Necrozma is coming to Alola before we see a battle against Lunana, with the Ultra Guardians pitching in. So altogether, despite the story making me feel like it's slow, and even dull at some points, I won't really be dragging this point out for the entire review due to the understanding of the writer's point of view that I just explained. Not that it matters too much as well though, as I definitely had a joyous time watching the second half of the episode. As I've expressed, Gladion's entrance was cool, the scene move scene was sick, the ending scene nearly made me die of hype feelings, and finally, we had that ruins image which got me theorizing, which is a great factor. And I can now even explain what I wanted to earlier on regarding this image. So if you pay close attention to the image, you can see a lichen rock and a Lolan Fulpix and Marowak next to one human who is praying to the legendary Pokemon. Which seeming as this wall image is some kind of prophecy in my opinion of how an old legend went to calm the legendary Pokemon down, hence the praying and even loose means stating that this relates to the original Necrozma legend, it looks like the Ultra Guardians will soon follow what this wall says once they decipher its text, along with their own Lycanroc and Alolan form Pokemon helping out against these legendary Pokemon, seeming as they own them Pokemon like these people did back in the day. These Pokemon playing a huge role in this arc. Obviously it's shadowy right now of how these Pokemon will play a role, but time shall soon tell. And I bet that detail wasn't just there to make it look fancy, but rather serve a purpose and help us the audience try and piece together how the story will go before we get to see it play out, acting like foreshadowing as well. So overall, yeah, I just found this one piece of detail to be very interesting and I cannot wait for the next episodes to get more plot points so I can work out how these Pokemon will play a role. Who knows too, maybe three of the humans who are on that wall are Ashes, Kiowis and Lily's ancestors. <laughs> I beg to differ, but that would be even more interesting. And what are the odds that the three Pokemon represent pretty much the main characters who get the main focus in the anime? <laughs> Although, at the same time, these three Pokemon are near one human who has the most emphasis on him. So maybe it is just Ash who uses these three Pokemon with that human representing him. As of course, Ash is the main protagonist. Enough of that though, you guys get the picture. I just find this to be future foreshadowing which will end up becoming great. I cannot also wait to see how Poipo will play a role in this arc too, due to that mission that was suggested back in episode 84, which could be to defeat Necrozma and even his backstory. And finally, how Poipo is even attracted to all the Necrozma symbols within this episode, giving us more emphasis that Poipo will play a huge role in this arc. Which everything we got to see of Poipo within this episode too was kinda neat to witness. Seeming as there isn't much to say anymore for the second half of the episode plot, let's finish off this story section by giving my thoughts on the whole Ultra Aura Wormhole plot that played out for the entire episode pretty much. At first, I was very confused, but after thinking about it more once the episode ended, I then started to understand the whole story, which the story isn't anything too exciting. No need to repeat what it is as well, as I had the story telling section for that. But I guess the story overall is a satisfactionary build up for this Necrozma story. 
Although, the cloud's only effect on the adults is definitely only plot convenience at this moment in time, which is disappointing. I really hope it gets explained in later episodes. But, at least the adults feeling down did actually have an effect on my engagement within this episode, as I kind of felt their pain while watching them. Although, that is very weird to state, <laughs> I know. But I just somehow felt as sad as them until we got to cut to the cheery classmates and hype inducing scenes. So, well done writers and animators, I guess. <laughs> just overall, everything about this plot is decent. Not great, not bad, just in the middle. I guess with everything we got to witness within this episode too, Necrozman looks like it's currently a power hungry monster, which is why it is chasing behind Sigalio and Lunana like crazy in order to absorb all their power for itself. Especially seeming as we learned within this episode too, that the legendary duo gave Necrozma their light in order for its true form to be regained. But somehow, Necrozma became power hungry years later, which I cannot wait to see that be explained. These Necrozma scenes though, compared to the adult plot, was definitely the most entertainment and interesting moments I found from this episode. With that story section now complete though, let's now move on to the animation and music aspects regarding this episode. Firstly for the animation, it looked fluid for the whole thing, but my favourite highlights have to be the introduction to Christmas scene, due to that shattering scene, along with the background detail. The Ultra Wormhole battle was very interesting to me, but also looked quite nice to my eyes. The scene with Combo scene was excellently animated, looking very pretty. And finally, the entire ending scene for this episode was just eye candy in regards of animation too. As for the music aspects, my god, it was extraordinary within this episode, which I believe most of the tunes was actually a remix of Necrozma's theme, which was absolute eargasm for me. Don't quote me on that though, as it may be a different tune. Just in case though, I'm mostly talking about the tunes that played during the Ultra Wormhole battle scene, the explanation of the legend scene, and finally, the final ending scene. The music that played during the scene with Combo scene 2 was very epic. And if I'm allowed to count this too, the music changed during the title card was lovely, and making for a narrator tired like every other adult was a very endearing torch. With that said, that concludes all these sections for this review. So overall, let's now give this episode a rating, which I'm going to give it a good rating. This episode may have not been as cool as I expected it to be, but there are definitely scenes in this episode that you will find very epic, and like I've already stated already, the episode was mostly to build up the rest of the arc anyway, so it's understandable for your expectations get taken away at the moment to witness this slow build up. Do I recommend this episode though? Hell yeah I do, as the anime has been leading up to this one point, so you don't want to miss this importance and even more greatness to come. However, if you have watched this episode, then let me know in the comments down below what you actually thought of it though, I'd love to hear. But for now, that concludes it for this review. So, if you enjoyed this review everybody, then be sure to consider leaving a like and a subscribe for future Pokemon content. It helps out a ton. you also become a member of the NCT Squad. And today's squad member shout out goes to SlimeDude37. Thank you very much for the kind words, it means a lot. And as always, thanks for being a regular viewer. If you want a chance to get a shout out at the end of my videos like this person, then be sure to use the hashtag Entity Squad. For now though, this is Entity Mains, signing out. Thank you for watching.